Good morning, everybody. I would like to call the Special Finance and Audit Committee meeting to order. I'd recognize, firstly, we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Sinemic First Nation. Our clerk today will be Ms. Sheila Gurry. Today's Special Finance and Audit Committee meeting will be held in accordance with the Community Charter, Council Procedure Bylaw 2018, number 7272, and Ministerial Order number M192, governing open meetings during a state of emergency and the Provincial Health Officer order regarding mass gathering events. Therefore, members of the public are required to observe meetings virtually and not attend in person, and question period will be suspended throughout the duration of the Provincial Health orders in effect. And the first item on the agenda is the introduction of late items, Ms. Gurry, and we have none. Um, thank you, Worship. Just the PowerPoint presentation that was provided to you yesterday afternoon, and it will be available on our website under supplemental items. Very good. I'd ask for a motion or approval of the agenda. It's amended then. Councillor Bonner, seconded Councillor Hemmins. All those in favour? Opposed? Motion carries. We have no minutes to adopt, but we do have a presentation. Good morning, Ms. Legan. Good morning, Your Worship and Council. Uh, we're really pleased today to uh, be in the um, final stages of uh, confirming the provisional budget for 2021-2025, the financial plan. And we're really um, hoping, uh, anticipating that we'll be able to confirm decisions today so that we can put a full package together for December 21st, so that we can pass a provisional um, uh, financial plan bylaw on that date. What that gives the city is an opportunity to immediately begin staffing the recruiting um, process for new positions as well as kicking off projects that are contingent on making sure that the financial um, resources are there. So it does provide a bit of momentum going into the new year. However, if that's unachievable, we will meet early in January 2021 and progress it uh, from there. So that is our aim today is to confirm decisions taken to date. So we are going to systematically walk through the 23 motions that were taken um, and passed or um, I guess decisions that were taken on December uh, the 4th. And uh, before we begin, we'd like to recap with our position based on those decisions. So we're going to walk through what our financial position and what the uh, anticipated tax increase will be based on that. So I'll turn it over to Ms. Mercer. Ms. Mercer, good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Your Worship. So as Ms. Lagan said, we'll start out with <coughs> not having a... Oh, here we go. Um, we'll start out with um, the projected property tax increase. So after all of the changes that were made on Friday, December 4th, um, as well as the work safe rate increases, um, we're now sitting at about a 3.5% a property tax increase for 2021. We had a bit of a rounding issue um, as we were just doing it on the fly, so it rounded down to 3.5, as I had said, 3.6 on Friday. And that's 1% for general asset management reserve contribution, as well as a 2.5% uh, increase for a general property taxes. So also keep in mind that we haven't received our growth numbers yet, and we had hoped that we would have some kind of indication by now, but they were having some issues with the report, so we haven't got that yet. So we will incorporate that for final, but um, if, growth comes in at more than 1.2 million, that will lower this rate as we budget conservatively at 1.2. So we could, for final, see a, a decrease from this, but at this point, we're not sure. Uh, all of the assumptions are still the same from last week, so I won't go over those, but if anybody has any questions on those, I'll be happy to talk to those. So I'll go through all of the items um, from December 4th and their resulting motions. Um, and once I've gone through all the motions, we'll show the dollar impact um, to the property increase as well as the special initiatives reserve and the strategic initiatives reserve balances. And uh, so that'll come after all of these recap slides. So the first one we discussed was the corporate asset management system and you made a motion uh, to move and second that the Finance Audit Committee recommend that Council add a corporate asset management system to the 2021-2025 financial plan starting in 2021. 
and uh, implementation, uh, implementation to be funded by 2.15 million from the Community Works Fund and 660,900 in funding from the Special Initiatives Reserve. And uh, annual operating costs are to be funded from general revenue when those kick in in 2025. And that motion was carried unanimously. If anybody wants to revisit, just I meant to mention it at the beginning, if anyone wanted to revisit any of these, Ms. Gurry is able to help you with that. I was just about to say, this is the first decision point we're passing, just as long as we know. Um, the corporate, at, oh, sorry, I need to flip my page. So the buyer position was the second item we looked at, and there was a motion made to move and second that the Finance and Audit Committee recommend that Council add the buyer position to the 2021-2025 financial plan effective July 1st, and that motion was carried. Uh, two police positions were the next item, and it was moved and seconded that the Finance and Audit Committee recommend that Council add a digital forensic technician position and a major case file specialist position to the 2021-2025 financial plan, effective January 1st, 2021, and that motion carried unanimously. Okay. Sure. Oh. Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, can we just pop in and move on? Okay, um, perfect. Um, I had asked Inspector Fletcher for uh, a question regarding this, um, these two positions. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I got anything back yet uh, on that. Just trying to follow, figure out where the money goes. <laughs> It's always the question, Fletcher. isn't it? Thank you, Your Worship. You want someone to follow the trail, you call the police officer. <laughs> So the question you put was, if we have a cost per device, um, how is that paid for? And that's out of our general um, revenue that we have. And the positions are paid out of the staffing portion of it. So they're, they're different areas. We have, at this point, uh, over six over 100 devices waiting in the queue. The average cost for a simple extraction is $6,000. Yeah, I, I remember that from the presentation. Yeah. My, my question is, if, if, if this person gets hired and you're not paying the $6,000 per device? We're not paying right now. That's if we go, right now we're squeaking through and prioritizing using a police officer to do it. All right, so there would, in, this, in that case, there wouldn't necessarily be a particular no, saving. No, but the, there isn't a savings that way. It, but you did ask the question last time, I believe, could we also offer this service to other police agencies? And Nanaimo being the largest detachment on the island district, we do get called upon from time to time for specialized skills and services. And the DICE area is something where we're recognized for um, the expertise that we have. So we could be billing back to smaller police agencies for that up and down the island. Okay, then what happens to that money? <laughs> that money goes in, it goes into our, um, our general account. And, okay, and who funds the general account? It does come from the municipal, uh, from the city of Nanaimo. And then uh, at this point we have not, at this point we've always had a surplus in terms of our funding. So we're always returning money back to the city at the end of the year. Thank you. That's very honest of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we aim for, right? Yes. <laughs> did, did I answer that correctly? Yeah, I think so, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah wasn't, different wasn't pools. Wasn't the answer I was hoping for, but it's it's. <laughs> <laughs> Never hurts to ask, Ms. Mercer. Okay. So the next item is the police mental health outreach team and no motion was made on this so it was not, uh, no changes were made to the budget for this one. The annual community water course restoration grant, a motion was moved and seconded that the finance and audit committee recommend that council add an annual community water course restoration grant program to the 2021-2025 financial plan to be funded from the special initiatives reserve in 2021 and 2022 and that motion carried and that grant was twenty thousand dollars per year councillor turley sorry that's okay thank you your worship um uh, through you to uh, uh finance staff so uh, i understand the uh 
restoration grant itself, but is there much in the way of staffing time to actually administer the, the uh, grant applications? Ms. Mercer. Well, I would suspect there is a, a staff component time to that. Uh, there would be need to have like some parameters created. Um, oh, is Dale is, uh, Mr. Lindsay is going to come and talk to that. But I would assume there is some staff time that would go to this. Good morning, Mr. Lindsay. Good morning, Worship Council. Now, I would compare this program most closely to one that um, I believe the community gets a lot of value on, which is, and I hate to compliment them this early in the morning, but Mr. Harding's Volunteer and Parks program. Um, it's very, very similar in that uh, there's opportunity for groups to outreach, access this fund, to seed money as they move forward. So I think, I think in a large part, staff is already liaising with a lot of these groups, working with them in kind. I, I don't anticipate this having a lot of staff time. Thank you. Thanks very much. The next one was a manager of social planning and there was no motion made on this one, so it was not added to the budget. Uh, manager of sustainability. So a motion was made on this one too, and it was moved and seconded that the Finance and Audit Committee recommend that Council add a manager of sustainability to the 2021-2025 financial plan, effective July 1st, 2021, and apply to B, uh, the BC Hydro Community Energy Manager Program, or offer program to fund the, a portion of this position. And this motion was carried, or yeah, was carried. The Councilor Indigenous Turley? Engagement Specialist. Sorry, oh. Councillor Turley has a question. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I understand. I thought there was um, somewhere in there a contingent upon getting the, um, the grant from BC Hydro. Is that still part of the motion? Uh, no, that was, uh, that was voted down. Okay. So we'll proceed with the position anyway, but uh, in the hopes that, unless of course you wish to ask for reconsideration. Well, I don't think I can because I voted against it initially, so. Ms. Gurry? Um, yes, Your Worship, that's correct. So, um, Councillor Turley's correct. He was opposed, and you need to be on the prevailing side or absent. Thank you. Ms. Mercer. The next position was the Indigenous Engagement Specialist, and no motion was made on this, so nothing was added to the budget. Um, municipal enforcement officers, and this was a change in their uh, work week from a 35-hour work week to a 40. And this, uh, there was a motion made to um, increase the hours of the municipal enforcement officers from a 35 to a 40-hour work week in the 2021-2025 financial plan, effective January 1st, 2021, and that was carried. The e-bike rebate motion. program, no motion was Made on no, Mr. Thorpe has a question. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm sorry to interrupt, Ms. Mercer. I just want to follow up, if I may, quickly back to um, Councillor Turley's uh, question regarding process uh, through you to, uh, I guess, Ms. Gurry. So I quite understand about reconsideration, and if you voted against, then you can't bring it forward again. But bearing in mind that these are recommendations that will go forward to a future council meeting, and at that time, there would be nothing to prevent us uh, debating any of these areas once again if we wish to. Am I correct? Um, thank you, Worship. Through you to Councillor Thorpe, that's correct. These will all be on the um, under consent items on the December 14th council agenda, so they could be pulled out and discussed again. Thank you. Appreciate that. where he left off. Uh, so the e-bike rebate program um, was next, and no motion was made on this, so it was not added to the budget. Community clean team was the next item, and it was moved and seconded that the Finance and Audit Committee recommend that Council extend the community clean team pilot to December 31st, 2021, to be funded from the Special Initiatives Reserve, and that motion was carried. 
The municipal services inspector was the next item, and it was moved and seconded that the Finance and Audit Committee recommend that Council add a municipal service inspector position to the 2021-2025 financial plan effective January 1st, 2021, and add a unit to the city fleet funded from the emissions reduction reserve. Councillor yeah. Turley has a question. Thank you, Worship. Just to clarify, I believe I voted in favor of this one and opposed to the next one. So I'd like to bring this one forward, please. Um, so, Your Worship, um, Councillor Turley would need to make a motion to reconsider and have that seconded. And if that passes, then um, uh, the motion would go back on the floor again. So, um, would you, you could consider that your motion to have that reconsidered. And if you yes, get please. a seconder, um, then, yeah. And seconded by Councillor Hemmins. Councillor Turley. Thank you, Worship. Um, so, my, my question is we're trying to find room in the budget um, to reduce it a little bit. And Sorry, Your Worship. Just um, this is the motion to just actually reconsider. So you have to vote on this first, and then if the motion is on the floor, then um, Councillor Turley can have the discussion on that matter. All those in favor of the motion to reconsider? Any opposed? None. Councillor Turley. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we're, we're trying to um, try to reduce the tax rate a little bit, and I, I have a thought that might help. Um, and that would be that we consider um, leaving the uh, project manager on a, a, a project expense so it comes out of the cost of the project and, and we go ahead with the, uh, sorry, reverse that, uh, leave, leave the project manager the way we had it and take the municipal inspector and leave that on, on uh, using consultants for this year um, as then that would come as a project cost and not come out of general revenue if I'm correct. Is that, Ms. Mercer, is that, I, I know it's apples and, not apples and oranges, but it's. Mr. Sims, uh, okay, comment thank on you. that. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, <clears throat> Councillor Turley is correct. So this, this uh, position was, is currently being funded through our projects so our capital projects, whether they be funded from uh, general revenue or water or sewer. Uh, if we uh, followed the proposal, it would be, that would remain as a status quo and as it's currently funded and not out of general revenue as it's proposed. So, so the work would still get done um, and it would, it would take away the whatever 0.11% cost increase to the general revenue tax. Um, and uh, then we could reconsider this for next year. And it would also give us an opportunity to, because we're leaving the project engineer in there, at least I assume we are, um, that uh, we could see how, you know, the, the quantity of work, whether it's getting done on a timely basis versus uh, the way we had it uh, using some consultants. It's just a kind of a, a smoothing of the, of the process as opposed to stopping right away. So that's why I would like to remove this one or at least hopefully vote this one down but retain the next one thank you that's scary um so your worship so the motion needs to be put back on the floor again um i can read it out and then um councillor turley has moved it and um um, it needs to be seconded and then voted on again. So it is that council add a municipal services inspe inspector position to the 2021-2025 financial plan effective January 1st, 2021, and an additional unit to the city fleet funded from the emission reduction reserve. So that's the motion that is going to be on the floor. And Second, then voted on Councilor again. Councillor Turley, seconded by Councillor Gesselbrock. We're now in discussion on that. Councillor Turley, do you want to... I've already said my piece. Thank you. Councillor Gesselbrock. Thank you, Worship. Um, I think that if we're serious about uh, trying to find uh, wherever possible to, to reduce uh, this year's taxation, this is uh, an obvious uh, option. Um, the work will still get be getting done, and it's just a matter of where it's coming out of capital or uh, general revenue operating. So um, I think down the road, looking at it to see if there's efficiencies having it more in-house and uh, and the budget, I think, is a wise thing, but I don't think that it's uh, necessary or helpful to us uh, this uh, year. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Worship. Uh, my two in support of. Um, 
I just want to quickly acknowledge that I, I am very supportive of what Councillor Bonner put on the table last week about actually having staffing positions that are funded through capital budget or um, a percentage of such. I know a few organizations that have the position and 50% might be paid for out of the sort of annual um, tax collection and then the other 50% will come out of capital. Um, so it's just a, a way of uh, accounting for it uh, within the actual capital program and not necessarily on the, the annual hit. So I think that's something uh, really worth exploring. Um, it sort of uh, is the best of both worlds in, in respect to how that's accounted for. Mr. Sims, do you want to offer any further comment on this motion? I don't want to put you on the spot. but uh, Your Worship, thank you. I, I think the, the discussion is, is very valid and, and appropriate, especially when you're trying to balance the the uh, the current financial reality. Councillor Bonner? Um, probably just to reiterate what Councillor Brown said is, is I think that's something I would like to see the position stay but I don't want to see the tax increase. So if if we can certainly fund it from uh, from the the, uh, the other revenue source um, after doing a bit of uh, talk with other people in, in, uh, in the community um, this is not an, an, an unusual way of paying for positions. It happens a lot. Um, and so, um, what I would also uh, uh, su suggest is that uh, this particular um, position, when I ask the questions, actually, if you look at the, the business case, it actually makes money, in, in essence. It pays for itself and then $27,000 as well, or $23,000 in the first year and then more in the next year. Um, I was kind of hoping that money would then be uh, available for the, to reduce the taxes, but it, it, I find now that it just becomes part of a surplus, which may or may not end up a surplus next year. And if it does, it would probably end up in asset management reserve, which I know we need one, it's just not the right time to do that. So I think I would rather have the position paid for from that department uh, with the money that it saves. Uh, or, uh, or not have the position at all. Just one of those two, two, those are the two options I'd be happy with. Councillor Thorpe. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so one thing that we continually hear about is frustration from our business community with uh, the time it takes to get uh, projects inspected and approved. And so I'm not going to support anything which will hinder that process. I'm in favor of uh, adding this inspector, uh, but I, I need clarification on Director Turley's uh, suggestion here. Is it that we still gain the position, but it's simply funded other than general revenue, or am I mistaken? Your Worship, if I may respond? Please. Um, my understanding is that when, when the current staff are unable to do it, a consultant is brought in to do it. And what the motion initially was, was to replace the consultant with another staff person. And all I'm saying is that I think we keep the status quo for this year uh, so that we don't have that 0.11% increase in, in um, uh, general revenue tax uh, and, and continue to utilize the um, a consultant and the expense of the consultant unless I'm mis misunderstanding would then go towards the actual project cost as opposed to uh, coming from general revenue. So I, I don't foresee any changes in the ability of the city to respond in a timely manner. I, I think it's a case of how we fund this and Thank you, that's, that's very helpful. So, um, uh, yeah, thanks. That, that assists me, and I guess the only other thing I would add, Your Worship, is that if we're, and, and I think we should, take this careful approach to new positions, I've said that many times, um, and look at the need to have as opposed to nice to have, and uh, I think that's important. So I think I will support uh, Councillor Turley's direction here. Thank you. Mr. Sims, did you want to comment? Yes, thank you, Worship. Just briefly to touch on uh, Councillor Thorpe's uh, point, is that this this position would focus on our capital construction projects rather than on the development and building permit side of things. So if there if there was uh, a, a 
a, a sense that this would be another building type inspector, that that's not the case. Okay. It would be on the construction projects. Councillor Armstrong. Um, I would just like to hear from uh, finance as to the viability of not funding positions from like operating costs from revenue versus as Councillor Bonner said. So if I understood through, through your worship, if I understood correctly that what Councillor Bonner was suggesting is that we um, allocate out the cost of that position to the projects itself, correct? Okay, so we currently, um, this isn't, this is, we don't have, we have more than one position that kind of, that is, works on multiple projects. Uh, many of our project engineers work on projects and we don't allocate them out that way. So this would be a change in the way we um, do our accounting for that. Um, so currently you would, I would, recommend that we have a consistent approach. It's, I wouldn't want to cherry pick the positions that we do that for. Um, yeah, I guess, that. yeah, I just, because I know best practice is not to do that is my understanding, is to take it from general revenue, not to uh, projects. I'm not sure exactly if, it, it, I would have to check and see what best practice is recommended, but that's historically what we've done, and my understanding is, is that's how many other places do it as well. Thank you. Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Worship. Just to uh, be a bit more of this dead horse, um, my, my understanding is, is as Councillor Turley has pointed out, that we presently um, contract this work out. And all I'm saying is that we just contract the work out to our own staff. So, um, and, and I don't, I, I quite honestly believe that we shouldn't be doing this all the time. Right? I think that what for the initial period is these projects have already been budgeted and they've already been budgeted for this work. So, um, and it's already been budgeted to be um, sent out to a contractor for the inspections. So that money already exists. It exists in a, in, in a project uh, budget. So if we hire this person and we just bill the project for their time, this is not unusual. Many departments and many large corporations bill each other for the work that they do to that department. Um, from a business point of view, it makes sense to have this position and bill it and pay for it ourselves because we're saving money and we're going to be saving money to the tune of about, if we add $27,000 onto the contractor, um, onto the person's wages, it's, it's pretty well $150,000 that the city will save. And so I'm saying, let's take that money, pay for the position, but I would like to relook at this next year as uh, to bring it back into general revenue. Because, or whenever these projects that are on the table finish, because they've already been budgeted for that amount of money. So that's, that's, my, that's my concept here. And I, I don't think it's unique. I, I think it's done on a regular basis. So I think that's, that's a way of getting the position and keeping our taxes down. Ms. Mercer. There is the, the complication where it comes in for us is there is sick time and vacation and 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 the budget and the projects change from year to year. So it's hard to budget from that perspective if if we're not quite sure what projects they're going to work on, where does their budget sit? Um, so we would still have to budget it for somewhere, but if we as projects come up, if they we wouldn't necessarily know right away which projects they were going to work on. So that adds a little bit of an element of, of complexity to the budget. Councillor Armstrong? I just was going to say, I, I would be really interested in doing more of this at a GPC where we actually have more time. I'm going to be voting in favour of, of the motion, but I would like to see this at a GPC because I think uh, Councillor Bonner has some, some good ideas there and I'd like to see it explored, but I don't think our time should be taken up today with uh, funding sources like like new ideas, but I'd love to see it at GPC. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Armstrong must have been reading my mind. Um, look, what we have in front of us is that motion. If we do not pass this motion, if we defeat it, which is Councillor Turley's intention, 
then work will carry on as it always has been. This work is not done inside City Hall. This work is done by contractors that are hired for individual projects to work on them because we don't have the staff capacity. Am I correct? So that's all we're talking about this morning. We're not talking about switching the accounting system. There's no motion to that effect on the floor. It's a great subject for discussion at some future time. But if we wish to save the 0.11% that Councillor Turley has pointed out, save in the sense that it won't increase the taxation level by that amount, uh, then uh, you vote against this motion and that will be the end of the story. If you're talking about doing something different, then I'd suggest the GPC is the place to do it. Councillor Thorpe. Thank you, Your Worship. I appreciate that. Just very quickly uh, through you to Mr. Sims then. My only other question would be um, Mr. Sims' opinion on or experience on the availability of hiring the external consultants as we've done in the past to do this work. Has that been a problem? Thank you, Your Worship. I think that's a, that's a very good question and, and maybe just a really brief explanation is typically when we do a project planning over the course of the year, we, we determine which projects will be done by in-house resources or external resources. Then we'll issue a, an RFP and typically the design consultant, the design engineering firm assigns an inspector to the work they've designed to do the, the contract inspection. So it's an, an entire package. So we, we have a design consultant carry the design out under our direction and then uh, conduct the construction inspection under our direction as well. So typically not a problem to find out. Seeing no further discussion, Ms. Mercer? I just wanted to, thank you, I just wanted to clarify that now that the um, vehicle is funded from the emissions reduction reserve, the general revenue increase is 0 0.06, as we, the 0 0.11 was the funding of both the vehicle and the position, so I just wanted that clarification. So we're not saving 0 0.11, we're saving point 0 0.06. Sorry? 0 0.06. 0 0.06. <clears throat> so if you want to save 0 0.06, you vote against this motion. All those in favour? So we're, we want to repeat this motion if we want to save 0 0.06. Is what you're saying? Thank um, you. Yeah, so just, just to be perfectly clear, Your Worship, I think you've made it clear, but the motion on the floor is that exact same motion that was on the floor on Friday. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? None. All those opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. That was simple. <laughs> Ms. Mercer. Thank you, Your Worship. The next position was the project engineer, and a motion was made to add this to the 2021-2025 financial plan, uh, and uh, it be funded from the Special Initiatives Reserve in 2021 and 2022, so there is no uh, property tax increase to this one in 2021 or 2022. And that motion was carried. Councillor Gesselbrock? Nope. Councillor Bonner? Thank you, Worship. Um, just a point of, point of clarification for budget purposes. We don't pass this till March, end of March, uh, in my understanding, finally. Um, could we relook at this um, after a bunch of more figures have been brought in? Ms. You Mercer? You could, through your Worship, you could. However, um, if once you pass the provisional budget, and you've said that this position is in the budget, they can go and hire that position. So if you reconsidered it in February after potentially it was filled, because you haven't. Ms. Curry. Ms. Curry. Um, so just for clarification, you wouldn't be able to reconsider if it was acted upon. So um, if um, a motion was made and passed and we went forward and hired the project engineer, at that point it's been acted upon and council couldn't reconsider this motion. I actually was referring to the last one, mostly. Right, so basically we have a motion that we're just not gonna hire a person, right? Um, so that was defeated. So can we relook at that in the event that when all the final numbers are in, we, we realize that our tax increase isn't quite as much as we thought it would be. We can yes. look at it. Yeah, then. you can add that point. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, this is one of these things, it's, um, it's, it's a penny wise, pound foolish type of argument because we're gonna save more than it costs us. And, and I, it's just that this tax increase, to me, shouldn't be more than 3%, so this, unfortunately. But if we can get it down below, I'm certainly coming back for it. 
Ms. Mercer. Okay, the next one, the next item was the art gallery's next phase, and um, council made a motion to fund the 25,000 for the, in 2021 for the development of a feasibility report um, on the concept of the art center and Nanaimo Art Gallery phase three uh, facility project, and that was to be funded from the strategic initiatives reserve, and that was carried. Uh, the next item is uh, the three, the start date for the three positions that were delayed to September 1st. Uh, council made a motion to um, reinstate uh, January 1st, 2021 start date and um, the January 1st to August 31st uh, wage component would be funded from this, uh, the special initiatives reserve for the manager of facility assets, junior financial analyst and the assistant accountant and that was passed. Um, Council also uh, uh, made a motion to reinstate all of the projects that were uh, identified um, back to the 2021-2025 20, uh, financial plan and those projects were now to be funded from the Special Initiatives Reserve and here is the listing of all of the projects that were added back. And in fairness so that people understand, people are listening, not, not Council. Uh, essentially, this means that we are continuing to spend some money which will generate employment within our community. Okay, the next item is the Community Connect pilot extension. So, uh, you made a motion to um, fund 147000 from the Special Initiatives Reserve to fund the Community Connect project uh, from January 1st to 20, 2021 to June 30th, 2021 and that motion was carried. Councillor Armstrong. I do have a question for Mr. Van Horn. Uh, as these are funding positions, will there be union implications in this? Are they gonna have to follow our union rules or can the union take issue with this? Because these are actually positions, it's not dollars for improvements, it's actually for uh, people working. Mr. Van Horn. Sorry, I should have asked that last week, but I forgot. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm not terribly familiar with this uh, exact project here, but as a general rule, when we let a contract for any sort of municipal service, we're required to have a, a clause in there that says that uh, uh, the minimum rate of pay is as established in the collective agreement. So when we do similar type work, there's minimum rate to pay. Uh, a lot of times though, if there's work that is just entirely different or outside, uh, I would need to dig into this one a little more to know exactly what the work is going to be. But. We generally just have to put it in the clause in the contract and then whoever lets the contract is responsible for making sure that it's adhered to. Maybe I can get clarification from uh, Mr. Rudolph or Mr. Lindsay. Is it because if um, we just give them the dollars, then they choose to use it for security, then union wouldn't be impacted? Or if we give them the dollars and they are using it for security, is union impacted? Because uh, that's my understanding and I could be wrong, but because they are using these positions, it could be done by city employees that clause should be in the contract. I, I think though for security type work, that's, that's a little different like this. Right now, for example, if we have uh, security guards around there, we're, the city is generally not in the security business. Uh, I can let Mr. Lindsay. No, but bylaws could be doing what they're doing is my point. That's what I've heard. So I, I just want clarification on that. Your Worship and Matt, uh, Councillor Armstrong, this is pointing to the need, in my opinion, to sort out the public safety uh, responsibilities and resources in and around the downtown. So this is one of the advantages of the other initiative that was being suggested to take a look at a larger boundary area and say, what is the bike squad? What is the, what are the bylaws? What are the city hired and what are the private uh, hired uh, security resources? Uh, how, how to optimize what's going on now and how to optimize that? That, that was, of course, uh, arguing to enhance it, but I think you should identify what you're doing first and then rationalize it. Uh, so, um, we currently uh, contribute to that uh, Community Connect initiative, but, and it is outsourced to security. We do not have security personnel in our organization. We have bylaw officers. This is over and above. So, uh, it's a complementary uh, thing, and it was intended originally to be 24 7, or at least overnight, and it's, I think it's migrated into something slightly different. So, it's not really, it's, it's, in a, it's a complementary service. It's not the same, but I do think it's 
I, I think it's I think it would be helpful to analyze the secure the public safety realm in the downtown so we're all clear. We do know what resources we have and we could certainly hear what the RCMP does and what Bila does, but see the big picture and then be satisfied with that. I think you need to do that before you are in, in an informed position to allocate additional funding in and around the downtown. And I think that would be helpful. That was and, my and it point. May, it may get better. <laughs> that was my point to put it to the GBC because we don't need, we have one person's perspective that it's working. We haven't heard from the police. We haven't heard from bylaws. But hey, how the motion carried. But that is a concern. And I'll leave the other issues to the union. They can deal with it. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Ms. Mercer. The next item is public art, and um, there was some discussion around increasing this budget, but no motion was made, so no changes were made to the budget. Public Works Day was another one. There was discussion on removing that from the budget, but no uh, motion was made, so no changes were made. Um, the AVICC conference, as it was canceled this for 2021, no motion was needed, and it has been removed from the budget. Uh, the COVID internal order. So uh, you approved allocating 500,000 from the special initiatives reserve uh, for a 2021 COVID internal order to cover the continuing costs and potential new costs related to the pandemic. And that motion was passed. If I can just ask a, a quick question, it's kind of obvious. Given the 6.9 million we got from the province as a special grant, is it possible that this specific budget item would in fact potentially if the government repeated the program so to speak be covered yep. but i was hoping thank you okay so the next item was snow and ice control so i have two slides for this just to kind of recap there was a quest for a level of service change or that was what was being discussed and as no motion was made no changes were made to the snow and ice control um, budget item and with active transportation two motions were made one was to allocate an additional 700,000 for a total of 1 million in the 2021 budget for pedestrian infrastructure and improvements and that's to be funded from the strategic infrastructure reserve and that motion carried as well there was a, a motion to add the albert street project and that's from milton street to pine street to the 2021 budget with 300 being funded from the strategic infrastructure reserve and 1 million being funded from the special initiatives reserve for the project delivery in 2021 to 2022 and that motion carried as well and the last motion that was made was to reserve 400,000 from the special initiatives reserve and 100,000 from the daytime resource center uh, to be allocated in the 2021 budget for, re, uh, for cons re, uh, recommendations coming out of the health and housing task force and that motion carried and we just wanted to make a note on the funding source um, the housing legacy reserve could be or may be an appropriate funding source for select recommendations that come out of the health and health and housing task force so we just wanted to make that um, an option as well that depending on what the recommendations are we could use that as funding as well councillor thorpe and then councillor bonner Thank you, Your Worship. Through you, um, I was not at the meeting at this point, um, and uh, I need to um, ask this question through you. It's very difficult for me to make a judgment on placement of $400,000 when Council to this point has not had a presentation from the Health and Housing Task Force uh, and a chance to uh, publicly ask questions about the recommendations and gain further insight into where that's heading. So I know there was a there were minutes, but that's all we've seen. So it seems to me this is, uh, without prejudging, this seems premature to me to be setting aside this amount of money for something where, at least I personally, I'm not even sure what it's going to be for. So perhaps. Uh, uh, Somebody else in council or staff can, can answer that qualm. Thank you. Councillor Bonner, Councillor Hemmons, then Councillor Trew. Thank you, Worship. Um, I, um, two, well, I had two questions. Uh, I'll start my first one, if I may. It was uh, to Ms. Ms. Mercer. Um, you said certain recommendations. 
Um, what would what are certain recommendations? Because the housing, through your worship, through the housing legacy reserve, it, it is a statutory reserve. So there are um, strict rules around what can be funded for it. So it is meant for housing. So there may be, and I'm not sure what kind of recommendations are kind of going to come out of the, the task force, but if they weren't kind of directly related to housing, um, you might not be able to fund them from that funding I source. I don't think any of them coming out are directly related to housing. Per se. We yeah, we have currently, we the, sh the shower program is funded through there, so we have some kind of uh, outlying issues that are projects that fund are funded from there, but generally, um, and I can provide council with the, um, the, the specifics around that reserve. Yeah, or we change the bylaw. Yes, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. To uh, Councillor Thorpe's point, um, this council did exactly, actually did more than this um, about in our last budget in which we reserved uh, the red part of just shy of $400,000 for the economic development um, work that was being done, mostly to put that money in the budget so that uh, it was earmarked for when the recommendations from that um, task force came forward, which I don't think are, are in front of us yet either. So that was money we actually put into the budget. All we're doing here is that we reserve this money, um, just to say, you know, take a look before we spend it so that it's reserved for any possible recommendations that would be coming from the Health and Housing Task Force. So we've done this before, actually we've done more than this before. So I think this, I'm fine with leaving this as it is. Councillor Hammonds. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> as the original mover, I'm happy to share my input. Um, following on what Councillor Bonner said, I would add that We've been working for 16 months with leaders from across sectors in this community, and I think it would be a blow to go through our budget um, knowing that the recommendations are imminent and not to have earmarked any funds for those recommendations. Even this isn't pre-supposing that we're going to fund anything. It's simply earmarking, which is exactly what we did for economic development. And to that end, I believe that rather than allocated, we had decided on the word reserve based on Ms. Leggins' um, feedback. Thank you. Councillor Turling. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I know this probably comes as a shock to Councillor Thorpe, but um, I, uh, I, I actually went along with this motion. However, the original motion was <coughs> to allocate, which I had, I wanted to defer that until we had the report. And then Mr. Rudolph jumped in and suggested, because you know the likelihood of my deferral motion passing was slim and none. Um, Mr. Rudolph jumped in and, and suggested a, a wording change to the word reserve, which Councillor Bonner has explained the reason for that with previous ones, uh, so that if, if Council decides that they don't want to enact any of the uh, things coming from the Health and Housing Task Force, then that money wouldn't be, wouldn't be used. So in other words, if it was allocated, it would have to be used. I think that, that was my understanding of the one word change, which I was far more comfortable with, so. Thank you, Councillor Turley. Councillor Armstrong? Yeah, I do share those concerns. However, I thought about it. And we do have a presentation on the 14th, and we don't pass the provisional till what, at the end of December? Yeah, so that still gives us opportunity that if we don't like it, uh, we'll be able to discuss it at another date. So for me, you know, having that, you know, put aside till the 14th, then discussion, and then we can have another discussion at finance and audit if we want to fund certain things. But I really do like that idea of, of the um, housing reserve fund because that is so limited as to what we can use it for. So if we could tap on that versus the other. But I'll leave that for another day. Thanks. Councillor Thorpe. Ms. Mercer. Ms. Mercer, sorry. I just wanted to say we haven't actually made any changes to the budget in the reserve. We have... I'll call it earmarked, or we've made sure that $400,000 is there if um, the, the task force needs it, um, but we haven't made any changes to the budget. So further discussion, it, there won't be any impact to the provisional budget unless you make a, a, a formal change. 
Councillor Thorpe. Thank you, Your Worship. So I appreciate the information that uh, that does uh, ease my mind. And if Councillor Turley is uh, satisfied with the word reserve <laughs> the money, then what can I say? <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, and that was uh, useful, I think, for those of us who weren't able to be here for this particular vote. I think uh, Councillor Thorpe's concerns are, uh, are entirely appropriate and well raised in these circumstances. Uh, I think we all have a sense we're going to be spending some money in this area, uh, but uh, obviously we're not agreeing to specifics yet because we don't have them, and, and I think that's an important thing. And who knows what exactly and how the recommendations of the Health and Housing Task Force are going to end up being implemented, if implemented at all. I don't mean that in a negative sense, I just mean that is a range of possibilities. Ms. Mercer. Okay, so now I'll go through the impacts, so the, the, the numbers of the, uh, that relate to the Council directives and the benefit update that were made. So the, 20, the changes that impacted the 2022 property taxes were, um, as we mentioned, the WorkSafe benefit changes as well as the um, extended health CPP and EI changes um, are, oh, we already had the WCP changes, sorry, the, the impact from the final uh, benefits changes which are extended, CPP, EI and pension had an impact of 295,000 or a 0.26% uh, increase. And we changed the funding source of the $25,000 uh, one-time ask for the art gallery. And uh, we changed it from general taxation to the strategic infrastructure reserve. So there was a savings of 25,000 there, or a 0 0.02 decrease. Uh, we, the increase to the uh, work week for the municipal enforcement officers had a $22,704 impact or a 0.02% increase. We also, there was a change to our internal support. So these are charges that um, are covered by water and sewer funds and it relates to the benefit changes as well as a portion of the municipal services inspector. So those offset the costs that we have for those and that was uh, resulted in a 0.03% decrease. We had some other minor changes that really didn't, uh, $2,500 um, decrease and the uh, five positions and their related costs uh, that were funded by taxation. Um, so the impact is uh, 0.06 for the buyer with a July 1st start, the digital forensic technician and the major case file specialist were an increase of a 0.09 each. The manager of sustainability with an effective July 1st start had an increase of 0.08% and the municipal in services inspector uh, had an increase of 0.08, but again, it's partially offset by that internal support for sewer and water fund. And we removed the AVICC conference and that had an approximate 0.01% decrease. So all of those items um, resulted in adding a 0.6 uh, to the budget and we started at 2.9, so you get a 3.5 is where we stand currently. Other changes, so the funding from the Special Initiatives Reserve, again, I'll recap quickly. The Capital Asset Management uh, System was uh, 40,500 from this reserve. Community Connect Grant, 147,000. Community Clean Team was 248,300. Uh, the Community Water Course Restoration Grant for 20,000 and the pandemic response for 2021 was 500,000. Um, we covered the um, reinstatement of the January 1st uh, start date for the three uh, positions and that resulted in uh, just $217,000 being funded from there and the um, project engineer at 155,000, as well as the um, Albert Street bike project, and that was a million. So, and then I, there's a next slide because we couldn't get them all onto one slide. So that totals to uh, just over 2.3 million. And then we 
uh, funded all of the, or we reinstated the projects that had been removed from the budget out of the uh, special initiatives reserve, and that was uh, 883,120. So the total funding that we're taking out of the special initiatives reserve for 2021 was $3,211,668. Other reserves that were impacted, we funded from the Strategic Infrastructure Reserve, the additional $700,000 for the pedestrian improvements, uh, as well as the Albert Street uh, bike project, which was $300,000. We also, um, as you'll see, because I'll recap this uh, reserve specifically, we also had the $25,000 being funded out of here for the art gallery as well. Um, we funded um, the uh, corporate asset management system from the community works fund so for 2021 that was uh, just over 751,000 and as you've made a change to the emissions reduction reserve we originally had 48,290 to fund a fleet vehicle but you've since changed that so that money will stay in the reserve so as a result of all these changes, the change to a typical house is uh, an increase of $14 for property taxes. So the total impact uh, to a typical home is now $145, and that's up from $131 that we had on Friday. And there was no changes to the water, sewer, and sanitation fees, so there was no change there. And just a recap of the Strategic Infrastructure Reserve, you now have a ending balance in 2020, a projected ending balance in 2021 of $1,280,038. And again, funded out of here where that was the 25,000 for the art gallery, the um, full uh, 1 million for the pedestrian transportation improvement projects, as well as 300 for the bikeway for, on Albert Street. We also uh, recapped the special initiatives reserve for you, showing what the opening balance was, all of the spending out of it. So at the end of 2025, after we've allocated all of the changes that you had asked for, there is 766, $766,447 left in that reserve. So, and that's the kind of the end of all of the recap of everything. We were asked to come back um, with potential uh, tax reduction. So, the one option that we have is you could use a further four hundred thousand from the special initiatives reserve as property tax reduction and um, to lessen the impact in future years we, uh, uh, of using the 400,000, we recommend reducing the general revenue funding for projects um, in 2022 to 2025 to, whoops, to um, have no impact in future years. So that is an option. Um, you could also wait uh, until final when we have growth and see where you're at there and make changes then. But those, that's kind of the options we have at this point. Councillor Armstrong. I know for me, you know, from what you've been hearing from the economists and seeing that 2022 is going to be far worse than this year. And there's going to be lots of businesses going out because the federal and provincial grants and dollars are going to dry up. So we're going to lose a lot of businesses. We're going to lose a lot of revenue coming in from property taxes, from commercials. So I myself would like to see that go into the uh, general reserve funding. Is it? Yeah, one-time reserve to reduce general revenue funding for projects and keep it at, try and keep it at that $7 because I think that's really critical. So that's just my two cents on those options. Councillor Brown. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm just wondering if this is the, the time to put forward other recommendations to reduce the taxes. This is a time for open discussion. We're looking at options, so if you have okay. a suggestion. Um, I do think just like last year, because it is a sort of a project expense, not an ongoing expense, but it's a five-year project, uh, the EMR could be funded from the Strategic Infrastructure Reserve, um, which would, I think it's 0 0.06. Sorry, what? Point 0.6, sorry. Yeah. EMR. We're, sorry, I'm having a hard time. Perhaps you could raise your yeah. voice, EMR? Councillor oh, okay. Brown. And okay. Uh, last year was funded from the we funded it from the strategic infrastructure reserve. We could do the same again this year. Just 
an idea to put out there. I'll second your idea if you make a motion. All right. I'll, well, but let's. We're not in a rush this morning. Um, we're scheduled to go to 11:30. Perhaps we could hear the bright ideas before we start going off to individual motions, Councillor Hammonds. Thank you. Um, can I just ask you to repeat the second bullet point and explain that for me again, please? Okay, so if we, through your worship, if we used $400,000 to reduce taxes in 2021, it pushes 2022 up. So what we're recommending is that to help mitigate that increase is to reduce the amount of money we take from the general revenue, so taxation revenue that funds projects and, and reduce that so it brings the increase down. We wouldn't drop below the 7 million target in, in 2022, but we would bring it down from where we were expecting it to be. So the increase from the 400 brings it up in 22, this would bring it back down. So it would even it out and you wouldn't see a spike in 2022. And no pro we wouldn't be compromising projects by doing that? There would be some impact to projects, but um, you would probably see something, it wouldn't be as much as we, as we removed this year, but some imp projects would be impacted. And if we go with this option, then that would leave us 366,000 approximately in our special initiatives reserve. And that's the one that doesn't have a trigger. It doesn't trigger the minimum balance repayment. That's right. Thank you. Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Worship. Um, if you're throwing out bright ideas, I'm not sure if you'll assume this is a bright one, but um, I'll talk about it again. Uh, we're expecting a loss in parking uh, of around $78,000, um, but this is only a one-time loss. Um, so um, to me, and, and from what I'm hearing um, in this whole conversation that we've had for the last couple of years, is, is it's not necessarily a good idea to fund a one-time thing from general taxation, and that's what we're doing. Uh, this represents the 0 0.08, uh, 0 0.07 uh, tax increase, um, but it'll be a tax increase that is not necessarily needed next year. I'm sure it'll get used up and, and as things get going along. Um, so I would suggest that we, we do this one-time uh, loss of up to $80,000 from one of the two reserves that we have an option from pulling from. I'd like to take it out of the parking reserve, but I'd have to change the bylaw. Councillor Thorpe. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I don't have any bright ideas, but uh, I, I'll give you my impression, and that is that quite rightly, I think we've been trying to mitigate uh, this year's tax increase um, by looking very closely at our two main reserves, and that's fine. But I share Councillor Armstrong's uh, less than rosy opinion of the coming year and I think things economically are going to get worse. I think businesses are going to struggle more and more and I think city revenues are going to be down again significantly next year. And so I guess as a general uh, caution, um, I feel we, we, can't, we can't mitigate everything for this coming year without being very careful uh, of leaving ourselves some options and some comfort level for for a year down the road or two years down the road. That's just a very general feeling on my part. Thank you. Councillor Turley. Thank you, Worship. Uh, through you to uh, Ms. Mercer and Ms. Fuller. Um, the projected property tax increases on page one of our recap is 3.5% for this, this year or this coming year. Um, and then I saw on the latest slide up there that it hadn't changed. So does that mean that it's still 3.5% or because I thought we were hopefully saving 0.11% um, with the one position that was changed? 0.06%. Point, yes, 0 through your worship okay, to Councillor Turley. Yes, the 0 0.06 will be removed from the 3.5%. Uh, the so it is less than 3.5, yeah. okay, thank you. 3.44, unless I'm mistaken. Round down to 3. Squeezing it down. <laughs> Councillor Armstrong. Um, one of the concerns I have with the strategic infrastructure reserve is that we're, we're saying that we're going to get casino revenues again. Well, first of all, with the sale, we don't know if they're even going to stay in Nanaimo. They say they do, but there's rumors 
circulating that they are going to relocate. We don't know that for sure. So I'm really leery counting on something that we don't know is going to happen. And we've got, you know, 1.25 million, 1.6 coming in. If they relocate or if the owners, you know, decide that they're going to shut down certain operations based on what their revenues coming are in, I'm really, I think we've got to really think about that because we're relying on getting those casino revenues and we don't know if they're going to be coming in. So um, that's, that's a concern I have that, you know, we're relying on something that's not a given, especially when, uh, when there's a sale to a new company and they're doing reorganization and they always say, oh, it's not going to affect you, right? And then all of a sudden you see, oh, sold here, moved here, blah, 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 because there are people in competition to get some of these sites. So it's just something I want to remind council of that, you know, we're really relying on that. We don't know for sure if that's going to be there. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Worship. Um, I do share all those concerns of the future, um, but I balance that risk with a uh, $15 million reserve fund that we do have. I hope we never have to tap into it, um, but uh, that's what it was established for, and I, I think it was a great foresight and great vision to establish it. So to me, that balances a lot of these risk concerns, and I, I do acknowledge that uh, it tends to be a calculation. If you want reward, sometimes you have to have a little bit of risk, and having that $15 million cushion, I think, really mitigates uh, some of those concerns for me. Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Worship. Um, if we're presently at 3.44 now, um, and we go with, I think, option one there, uh, the first one, we're now down to 3.04-ish. If we institute um, Councillor Brown's recommendation and mine regarding um, both the, the parking and the EMR training, we're now down to 2.87, which is 0 0.03 less than when we started this whole process. And we've got more people working, um, which I think is a win all the way around. And if we were to go back and look at that, that uh, inspector's position, we could add that in and still not get above three. So uh, not that I'm suggesting we do that one right now, but the, I think if we institute these things, will it be at 2.87? Not a bad headline. Um, and um, I, I, I see Ms. Fuller shaking her head, Councillor Bonner, and that is never a good response to your suggestion. Did I not bring enough chocolate? <laughs> no, I'm not. So uh, through the mayor to Councillor Bonner. Uh, so right now we're removing the municipal service inspector. If you chose to use 400,000 from your special initiatives reserve to reduce taxes in 2021, and then we adjust projects uh, in future years so that we're not seeing a big spike, then assuming we fund the EMR, and I'm not sure, Councillor Brown, if your motion was for just year two or the remaining four years. So right now I'm just assuming you're talking about next year. And then parking currently sits at a deficit or funded from property taxes is currently at 84,000 because we've had those work safe changes and benefit changes. So that has increased what you're now funding from property taxes. Mm -hmm. So assuming your motion was for 84,000, I'm getting you're gonna be about 3.2. Because it's not one one million dollars isn't one percent of taxes; it's one point one three. So when we start talking point zero two changes, it does, yeah. So my math is three point two right now. So, just, but I can confirm with my person in the back room to make sure we're both on the same yeah, page. Yeah, that's good. So just so we're clear, if we implement all the bright ideas here this morning, including the options recommended by staff, we're we're back to three point two, but we're not three. Well, I, I, my, my accounting here worked pretty good. <laughs> take take a minute. We have time. Yeah. I stand corrected. You'll be at three. Two point nine six. So three. Okay. Slam dunk. Let's go home. Council point Gesselbrock. nine six. Okay, Council Gesselbrock. Okay. Three, Your Worship. There's only one. <laughs> um. Just for my own clarity, uh, we would be reducing, um, through you to staff, uh, we'd be reducing the 2021 uh, tax increase um, from the um, Special Initiatives Reserve, and then that's going to impact the subsequent year taxes, but we're going to mitigate that through just reducing our, our capital budget. Going forward, okay. For your worship, yes. From the, the general, the portion that we pull from general revenue or general taxation, yeah. we will reduce that amount um, 
to to fund projects. And how many years does that take to kind of smooth that out, that, that loss of... I believe Ms. Fuller did it over, did you do it over five? Three. Three so years? So she smoothed okay. it. And, um, and, and that would still allow us to, to maintain a seven million uh, yes. target? Okay. Yeah. Great. The magics of accounting. Thank you. I saw our CEO rubbing his forehead Thank you. thoughtfully, Your Worship, which is uh, scary. So. If, <clears throat> So one of the things about this is we still haven't got the growth numbers, so which we anticipate to be favorable. Um, if council's desire is to establish a target of three, then the, the number allocated to this from the reserve would be slightly different. So if you if you if you make a decision to target that, then uh, ultimately when growth numbers come in in the finals, then you would see a, a number that's specific tailored to that from the reserve. So there's a it's not that you. T we still have that little bit of, we're in a favorable position, I think, on this. So it, it could be up to that, but it'll be definitely less than that. So it's just, a, it's a matter of, are you satisfied with 3.44 or would you like to set an alternate target? And perhaps the finance folks can explain this better because this, this allows us as, uh, yeah, so we still haven't got the growth numbers. So we expect them to be better. So I, I think you all know this. So uh, you don't necessarily say 400,000. It's if you set the target for the tax increase as three or whatever, 3.2 or whatever the number is, then that uh, when the growth numbers come in, then you will have a specific allocation from the SIR that comes out of that, that to meet match that, matches that. So it'll be less than 400. Probably said that wrong, but uh, is that correct? Okay. So it's a matter of do you want to make a motion around and, and perhaps Ms. Curry or the finance team can assist in providing some direction because we need to have some certainty around this. So there is a motion I think required on this to get us to a place where it's either, it either if there is no further motion, then we will have the 3.4 uh, established as the rate today. And that would be dialed into the uh, provisional uh, information i also will confuse this confuse this slightly to say that this all these decisions are coming back to your special council meeting on which is in the form of a gpc but it's actually a, a special council meeting on monday as in the, uh, as consent items so i guess it's theoretical that you couldn't pull any of those out at that time as well but uh, we're hoping to get as much certainty as possible so that we can put the, the information package together for the provisional for the 21st so that's we're now into under two weeks to do that. So, uh, so uh, it's just what what is your aspirational goal here? And it, and uh, that'd be my ask. Uh, thank you. I have uh, three now. Four councillors. We'll hear from them. And then maybe we can move to motions. Councillor Turley. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I hate to keep asking this, but I need to understand the reality here um, with regard to the municipal inspector. Um, savings going from 0.11 down to 0 0.06. Um, I, I look at the financial analysis of the uh, business case and the one-time cost for creation of the position are projected to be 51, roughly 51,000. Is that the 0 0.05 that we're referring to as not saving? Through your, through your worship to Councillor Turley, of course 48,000 of that relates to the vehicle and that will be funded through, it was recommended that the, that be funded through the Emissions Reduction Reserve. And so that's where the 0 0.05 reduction or the difference came from. So, so we have two funding sources for that position. Yeah. My, my question is, um, if we are uh, eliminating the position for this year, why do we need to buy the vehicle? We don't. We would, re we would remove both of those um, we would remove the position and the vehicle and all of the other one-time costs that are associated with this position. So explain to me again, please, because I'm not with it today. Okay, no, that's I, totally I, fine. I, I, I know what Councillor Turley's getting at. We're not buying the, the vehicle wasn't being bought out of general revenue, therefore mm -hmm. not reducing the budget. We were pulling it out of a fund, so yeah. we can't use it for any other purpose. So that's why it doesn't have quite that impact. I understand that part now, but it's, I'm just trying to figure out where where the 0 0.05 disappeared to, or why it's not included in the 1.11. So originally, when the business case was put forward, the wages and all the costs associated with it 
which included a vehicle, were all funded from the from general okay. taxation. Okay. okay, now I get it. Okay, yep. thank you. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Worship. Um, I through to Mr. Rudolph. I'm just curious why why we have to make this particular decision today if we're waiting on growth numbers. Like, can we wait and then make because I, I from what I understand in the provisional budget is important to round positions um, and, and potential acting on those. This motion in the growth numbers would essentially be not impacting that and just be a decision for that final tax rate. So I'm just trying to figure out when we actually have to make oh, that decision. It's, a, it's just a decision you could make today. Uh, I mean, if otherwise it's 3.44 and uh, you could make a change uh, at final. I mean, I've seen that done too. I mean, once you get everything in, you may say, well, look, we've got a little more than we thought. We'd like to reduce that to 3.3 .3 or something like that. You can do that later. Um, it's, it's clearly up to you. Or if you want to set a target, no, we, we're, we're going to land at 3 or 3.25 or whatever the number is. You could also do that today. It's just a matter of where you wanted to conclude your discussions today. Otherwise, it would be 3.44-ish. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I prefer to wait. I just am uh, uh, I understand all the optics and all that, some the things and the importance to to the community around uh, sometimes chasing those percentages. But I, I I would personally like to wait until those growth numbers are a little more finalized and we have a, a better picture to to make those decisions. Would that create more difficulties for staff? Let's assume that we're going to go to three at some point. Councillor Brown is basically saying, I don't want to have to say that until it's the absolute final zero hour. It's a yes or no, jump over the bridge, whatever. Um, is that going to create any difficulties for staff in terms of finalizing the budget and staffing, hiring, and all those kinds of things? Be candid. Not that you're all, not always candid, of course, but. Yeah, so if we, if we would need decisions made around positions if we were wanting to go starting in January and, and hire those positions. So um, that those decisions would need to be made now. Growth is just a preliminary number at this point. Um, we, we don't get final until March. So generally we pick that up for final. Um, so I'm not sure if I answered your question or not. So your worship. The question is, if you give the budget three readings on the 21st of December, that is our mandate to go forward. It's like the uh, three readings on a rezoning. It's like the bank will not accept that as a given for the developer. So we would take that as the same kind of notion. And then uh, we would proceed as per the decisions you've made with the assumption is 3.44. This wouldn't affect the body of work that's in this. It would, what we're talking about is drawing from these sure. this money to uh, smooth out the number or modify it at, uh, at once you get the, the growth numbers in or you could do that today and say no we're going to we want to end at something but it's it, it, it may be easier to do it the other way and i don't think it does affect the work program but I, and I, i'm not sure what's involved from the finance department's point of view of, of making that change at that time but uh, one of the things we were hoping to avoid is a constant conversation around the budget throughout the first quarter which would create some work and confusion, I think. So everybody, including outside parties in the community, would benefit from that. And I suspect you may still get more submissions uh, to council early in the year. I understand the chamber may be giving you a presentation on budget. So uh, that's post third reading, but it may, uh, it may influence your final decision come the end. Yeah, thank you. Just follow up there, Your Worship, and just follow up comment is, from what I'm understanding, we can give the assurance around the positions and then make, make that decision around uh, uh, once those final growth numbers come in and the, you know, the softening on a particular year without impacting uh, staff's ability to act on those uh, positions. And from what I heard from Ms. Geary, uh, if they are acted upon, we've lost our ability anyway. So uh, I, I, think it, I think it works in my, my mind and from what I'm hearing. So uh, you know, I can go where council wants to go on this, but I, I just my preference would be to wait. Councillor Gesselbrock or Ms. Gurry, did you want to say something? You've taken yourself off the list, but you're looking at me. Um, so. I, I think Mr. Rudolph um, um, answered the question, and um, I just wanted to make sure that Ms. Mercer was 
my understanding of what Councillor Brown was saying is um, go ahead with the provisional because that ensures the positions but make the decisions on the growth and, and these options before the final in May. I think that's what he was saying. So I just wanted to make sure there was that understanding. around. Councillor Gesselbrock. Thank you, Worship. Um, I think my understanding is that if we okay this now, um, we can say report out our budget is 2.96 um, or, or whatever once, once that, um, if there's motions around the EMR or, and um, the parking uh, reserve. And then once we get to May and we have our, our full growth numbers, we could decide and make a change whether we want to make up that percent dif difference either from this or from, from growth. And so for me, it's a, it's a communication exercise. Like if our goal is to keep the, the budget down and, and use our growth for that, my preference would be to communicate that early because um, there's no benefit in saying, okay, there's 3.44 uh, now and then in May reduce it because from December to May, we're gonna be hearing about how we're, we're, we're spending too much money. And so if we're gonna do the same thing anyhow, there's benefit to me in, in just making the decision now to, to be under that and use this money from here. And, and maybe that could paint us into a corner, but I, I don't really think so. So I think it's worthwhile to have the discussion now to, to use this to decrease the uh, property tax increase, and then um, that will be reported out. Uh, to the community um, and will be the numbers of the percentage that will be used and then in May we can reevaluate are we going to uh, have it come from the special initiatives reserve or if the growth numbers come back favorably then um, we uh, growth numbers come back favorably then we can use it from growth and by doing that I think too if we go this option and approve this now I think it's going to take a lot of pressure off of uh, us having additional positions as well, and positions that I think that are really important. Um, so uh, I, I'm supportive of, of moving these things forward now. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Worship. Same reason. Um, we have an opportunity to have a 3% budget going out of this meeting, I, and that represents uh, a 2% operations increase and a 1% asset management increase, which you all voted for. Um, so I would rather have the conversation and, and you know, in all honestly, the vast majority of people out there read headlines. I'd rather the headlines is that it's a 3% increase than it's a 3.45, or which is going to be a 3.5% increase. I'd rather have that conversation and then reduce it later on, which looks like that's quite a possibility. And if that's the case, then we can just put part of that $400,000 back into the reserve. That's a, I must be a much easier way of doing it. I'd rather get it done today. Ms. Legan, did you wish to say something? Thank you, Your Worship. This is a, a typical situation that I reference as a plug in a budget with imperfect information, but the rationale behind it is very sound. Um, the, uh, in the weeds, in the detail, and with legacy of uh, many, many years' experience, are recommending this option. I feel that it's a um, very easy target to hit. The trend analysis on um, budget compared to actual growth shows several hundred thousand dollars um, difference on the positive side where we would see, um, I think last year it was over $200,000 from 1.2 to 1.4, correct? And that seems to be the trend analysis. So I think that we would be um, sending a signal to the staff that 3% is the target. Based on your council, we would look to how to um, land on that. Um, and the special initiatives fund is the, or special initiatives reserve is the one that the growth revenue would fall through to anyway. and. That's the one with the most flexibility for you in the future in 2021 to um, have additional initiatives that may come to light in the first several months of 2021. So it is the best case scenario 
internally, and it sends a signal to um, the residents immediately that the target is 3.0 or 2.96 or whatever exact number. So it would be, it would be um, I think, a preference from a senior financial position to, to take this um, avenue with all the others, the EMR and the parking as well. Councillor Brown. Yes, thank you. I sense that I'm probably in the minority here, but uh, that's okay. Um, um, yeah, I, 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 I understand that logic and I understand the comments of uh, my fellow councillors, but I think we're making assumptions here. Um, uh, I think you know, growth will probably be positive. You just have to look around, um, and that's a great thing. Um, and that's going to be a good news story no matter what. First of all, I don't think there's going to be much communications gain between the 3% and the 3.5%. Um, I think the folks that, uh, you know, folks that I'm here from believe it should be a 0 or a 1%. Uh, so um, anything above that is uh, not acceptable in their minds, and, and that's okay. It's okay to have that uh, viewpoint. I also think, you know, having that money there allows us flexibility into the future, especially, you know, vaccination rollout is occurring, um, you know, they say before the end of the month here in Canada. Um, and um, so I think there might be future decision points, maybe around Bebin and all those sorts of things. Um, and I, th I, th I think there's a lot of value in not falling into a false sense of urgency on this particular decision, even though it may come with some political pressure in the near term. That's something I'm personally comfortable with. If it's not about this, it's going to be about something else. So. Uh, um, just pick your topic. There's plenty of uh, things for folks to write in about and express their concerns. So I'm still of the opinion that uh, we can provide the assurance to act upon uh, to staff certain projects and positions, um, but allow us uh, maximum flexibility, which I think is absolutely crucial in uncertain times. Uh, thank you, Councillor Brown. I uh, firstly want to express my appreciation to staff for, uh, for all the work that's gone into this. Uh, Councillor Gesselbrock, you want to? Oh, I no. Finish so I, off. I, 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 I was just going to put. This up and then I was going to put some motions forward. Thank, thank you. Well, then, then I'll then I'll continue speaking. Uh, express my thanks to staff for all the work that's gone into this and all the advice and suggestions. I certainly appreciate Councillor Brown's position that he'd, he'd like to give us a few little more time to uh, to arrive at this. But I think, as he's pointed out, there are people out there who will never be satisfied unless we're actually cutting. Uh, the municipal budget and I have no intention of trying to satisfy those people because the majority of folks still want all the services and, and Lord knows when those services are diminished uh, whether it's access to a park uh, or, or a sidewalk not cleaned or, a, or bushes interfering with their backyard uh, enjoyment and shading their flower beds we're, we're going to hear about it. Uh, so having said that, I think that there appears to be general consensus around this. We want to stick to three. Uh, and if growth and everything else works in our favor, and we're all certainly, I think, mainly optimistic and hopeful, so be it. That, that's a good news story down the road. But uh, I think three in light of other uh, municipalities, for instance, Vancouver settled on five. Uh, and, and where we range, and I appreciate many will say, well, that's how things just go out of control because you all say, oh, we're in the middle range and away we go. But the reality is in this city with the 1% commitment to the asset management uh, program, which I think is really sound public policy, we're really saying 2% in these circumstances. Uh, we're looking at increased costs because of COVID uh, and an increased demand for the very th things, particularly on the recreation side and the park side, uh, how, many, how much pressure have we had to do something about the parking lot at Westwood Lake because so many people are out there uh, utilizing the, the joys of that trail. So I think it's a perfectly reasonable position and so I'll look to Councillor Gesselbrock and we can make uh, what will be an appropriate motion to satisfy uh, Ms. Gurry and Mr. Rudolph and, and finance. Uh, we'll all be generally happy, I think, to support it. Councillor Gesselbrock. Thank you, Richard. I think just first, I don't know if we need to move through uh, the list of things, but I, I just wanted to move uh, Councillor uh, Brown's suggestion about the EMR um, to fund the EMR funding out of the strategic initiatives for the next couple of years. Strategic infrastructure reserve from the next couple of years. Ms. Mercer? So which years would you like that for? 2021-2022. Uh,
Councillor Bonner. Sorry, thank you. And so the motion is, if we can have some wording, please. Um, Your Worship, I would suggest um, that Council um, it, like move that um, Council fund um, the EMR, and it would be spelled out, um, from the Strategic Infrastructure Fund in the years 2021 and 2022. Are we all clear? All those in favor? Any opposed? Councillor Turley? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what EMR is. Is that um, Councillor Turley, it's the, the medical training apparatus for the firefighters. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, I'm in favor. Sorry. The fire chief is coming to the rescue. And Your Worship, could um, Councillor Turley's vote for the record? Were you in favor? Okay, okay. Uh, three Good morning, worship. Chief Fry. Good morning. Uh, the EMR stands for Emergency Medical Responder, and it's a higher level than the standard first responder program uh, that our firefighters, and we've had our first uh, round of candidates go through, and they're just waiting for their testing in Victoria. So if I could ask, ask a question. So this is uh, money that is used to pay for the training, not to pay for any higher wages? Uh, through your worship to Councillor Turley, correct. They do not receive any higher wages because of the uh, ex uh, advanced care that they're providing, uh, but it does include training and equipment. Thank you. And you're in favor? Yes. Any contrary? None. Carried. Thank you. Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Worship. I'd like to put a motion that the uh, projected parking sh um, shortfall of $84,000 be funded from the Strategic Infrastructure Reserve. Seconded, Councillor Hemmins. Any discussion? All those in favor? Councillor Thorpe, sorry. Thanks, Your Worship. I'll probably support this, but again, I have to repeat what I said earlier. I'm just a little concerned that we are so often uh, deciding to fund various things through our reserves, and that's fine on a short-term basis, but thank goodness we have healthy reserves that have been built up over the years that allow us to do that. Uh, and we can say that, yes, the rainy day has arrived and it's time to use those reserves. Fair enough. But I think we have to keep in mind that there's going to be, I think, lots of other rainy days ahead. And I think this, is, this, this habit of funding from reserves um, without very careful thought uh, could lead us into future dangers. Thank you. Councillor Brown? Thank you. For clarity on the motion, was it Strategic Infrastructure Reserve? That's, that's what I have um, um, from the motion. Thank you. I, I will be opposed to this. Um, I think it, I would support it from the Special Initiatives Reserve, which did have the funds flowing into it from the, uh, um, the COVID grant from the province. Uh, this, this funding gap is potentially a direct result of COVID, so I think it's more appropriately from the Special Initiatives Reserve. Councillor Bonner? I, I would view that as a friendly amendment if Councillor Brown wished to suggest that. Yeah. Yeah. It's up to you as the movers and seconds accepted as friendly. Okay. I just did. And, and the seconders in agreement. Councillor Gesselbrock, anything you wish to say? I was just going to suggest that. <laughs> Any further discussion? Councillor Hemmons. Thank you. Um, yes, really briefly. I just want to acknowledge Councillor Thorpe's concerns and, and say that I share them. The reserves, um, that is our safety net, and I think we have used our safety net appropriately this year. And one of the things that I'm aware of is that we're starting at a 3.3 for next year. And so um, that is something that I am considering as we're drawing on reserves for one-time operational costs this year. Thank you. Councillor Gesselbrock. 
Thank you, Worship. Um, just to uh, add to that point by Director Hammond, or Councillor Hammonds, I, I agree that we need to be very responsible with our, our reserves and um, the money that is going to uh, into the parking reserve makeup is from the strategic initiative reserve, which really is the surplus, not the surplus, but the variance from the COVID recovery grant. And that money was meant to uh, deal with situations where we had shortfalls. So I think that this is extremely reasonable. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Thorpe is anything but a petty person, but I give him full permission next year uh, when we're wrestling with this to say, I told you so, and I told you so, and I told you so. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Contrary? None. Motion carries. Councillor Bonner. I would like to make a motion that we reduce the 2021 projected property tax increase by allocating additional funds from the special initiatives reserve for property tax reduction. Currently, how much, do I just read that out or? <laughs> um, you can just say that you would like a $400,000 allocated. Currently $400,000 allocated from this reserve for 2021. An addition, an addition, sorry, an additional four, because you have- An additional yeah, 400,000, yeah. yes. So, Your Worship, um, I think that motion was perfect if he, um, instead of saying additional funds, said $400,000 additional funds from the Special Initiatives Reserve, and then that motion would be perfect. You could say up to $400,000. Okay, up to. Up to. Okay. I'm totally confused Hammond, now. Second that. <laughs> So we reduced the 2021 projected property tax increase by allocating it up to an additional 400,000 from, from the special initial reserves for property tax reduction for 2021. We should. To achieve a to 3%. achieve a three percent tax increase, or two plus one is the two plus says, which I prefer. to receive a two percent tax increase for <laughs> operations. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ms. Mercer, I've got so many people on the speakers list. Let's just can we have somebody or Ms. Gurry read out the motion so that we all know we're talking about the same thing, just to be safe and sure. Um. It, it, I would maybe defer to um, Ms. Lagan since it seems to be coming from over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to jump on your worship. Um, and it would be reduced 2021 pro projected property tax increase by allocating additional funds from the Special Initiatives Reserve for property tax reduction up to $400,000 to achieve a target of 3% tax increase 2% tax so increase plus 1% in the capital asset management. Yeah, there's a lot of reserve. <laughs> and th that's what Councilor asset management 1%. Thank you. And that's what Councilor Hammonds has seconded. Councilor Bonner, do you need to say anything further? I couldn't say anything more than that. So, um... Councilor Brown. Thank you. Uh, I will not be in support of this uh, for the reasons that uh, Councilor Thorpe just highlighted previously. Uh, I think this is unnecessarily pulling from reserves. Mr. Rudolph, did you want to say anything? No, sorry. Councillor Gesselbrock? I'm good, thank you. Councillor Thorpe? Thank you, Your Worship. We got it? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so I'm willing to take staff advice on this, but I'm curious about the second bullet that uh, I thought was all part of the recommendation, and I haven't heard that stated as part of the motion. Ms. Mercer? Through your worship, we would, as part of the first part, we would do the second. We would allocate um, or reduce the general revenue funding um, in the years 2022 to 2025. So that's part and parcel of it to, to make sure that we keep things as they are. Thank you, I think that's important. It'll work the magic in the kitchen out of sight. <laughs> Councillor Turley. Thank you, Worship. Um, a question through you to uh, finance staff. So we're referring to the Special Initiatives Reserve, and I see in the uh, 
on page 19 of today's report that um, there is a, an item, a line item in there, property tax reduction of 400,000. So is that what we're talking about or is that, that's in addition to? Through your worship, to Councillor Turley, it's in addition. So that $400,000 that's showing in there now is related to the 1.4 million that we've allocated over the three years and um, $400,000 related to 2021. And then the other, the other thing in that is the uh, Health and Housing Reserve um, uh, Task Force amount that we've reserved of 400000 and I'm hearing that potentially that could come from a different reserve? That is correct. Thank you. Seeing no further speakers, all those in favour? Any contrary? Councillors Brown and Turley. The motion carries. It's unusual. You never know where you're going to find your allies in politics. <laughs> we have uh, no reports, Ms. Curry. Uh, no other business that I'm aware of. Councillor Bonner, motion. I, I just also want to uh, thank staff for, for the work that they've done on this budget. Um, but I also want to thank council for the work that they've done on this budget because we've been able to hire three RCMP, two civilians to work with the RCMP on very important work, three finance positions, an engineering position, increase our bylaws, and we did it for 2%. Right? And I don't think anybody, I don't think you're gonna find any municipalities in this part of the world doing it for that. So I, I want to thank everybody for, for bringing this forward, except for him. Thank you. Councilor Brown. Thank you, Worship. I feel the need to respond. Uh, we did not just do it for 2%. We pushed out a bunch of the increase onto future years. I think that absolutely needs to be highlighted. Um, uh, um, and I, we also will see a reduction in, you know, it, it may make sense, but we will see a reduction in uh, other areas as well, in particular the the capital regime, and those things do do matter. So uh, I think the budget works with the numbers, but I, I'm under no illusions that uh, uh, money has been created from nowhere. I, I think the point is very well taken. To me, it, it's akin to having a patient who's in a lot of pain right now. Uh, and the question is whether uh, they can handle more pain now or more pain later, and I'm hopeful that the patient will get better, and what pain we avoid to, uh, today, which will lead to an increase down the road, they'll, we'll be in a better position, and I'm certainly hopeful for the, the general state of things. I am somewhat more optimistic than some members of council, um, and, and I say that with a certain sadness because there are so many in our community who are suffering so much more than others. There are others with steady incomes and employment and uh, the savings rate in Canada has apparently increased significantly amongst Canadians. Debt levels, in fact, among some people are indeed dropping. Uh, and I am somewhat hopeful that all of those people who are hoarding up their gold, so to speak, because they have no place to spend it, will turn around at some point uh, when things improve and, and start to spend it and recognize, I hope with gratitude, uh, that a lot of people have uh, have not done so well for all these tough times. And uh, I'll repeat what Councillor uh, Bonner said about thanking Council for this, uh, but mindful of the fact that uh, we're just uh, stewards of the people's money. So uh, well done, everyone. Thank you again to staff. And Ms. Gurry. Um, thank you, Worship. I, I believe Ms. Mercer might want to just go over the next steps. There's one more slide. Oh, yes. Just give you a quick just update on what's next. Before we dash off, Ms. Mercer. Thank you. So the next steps will be, um, we will go away, make these changes, and we will come back on the 21st for first three readings of the uh, financial plan bylaw. And then we will, I believe it's January 18th, we'll be back at a council meeting for adoption. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Armstrong, a seconder. Councillor Hemmins. All those in favor, opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone.